How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Forget me forever. How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long must I? trembles for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Were you there when she nailed him to the tree? Sing to the Lord, I will sing to the Lord, because He has done it. Sometimes it causes me to tremble. extend a very hearty welcome to our service today from the New Hope Community Church. And um, I, it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will just work in the hearts of each person who is watching as we uh, serve him with our music, our prayers, and also a message from God's Word. 
To God be the glory, and may his name be honored and glorified today. Amen. A number of years ago, a fellow named Jim Reeves had a wonderful song out. Welcome to my world, won't you come on in? <laughs> That's what we're saying today, come on in. Miracles nice. still happen now and then. And so as we think about the situation we have with the uh, world today, and the situation we have in Nova Scotia, it's a time we want to just say, it's time to come on in. Would you join me in prayer? Quiet our hearts, dear Father, and in so doing, remind us that you are sovereign. Not almost sovereign, but altogether sovereign. Nothing occurs in our lives that has not been masterfully planned and put together by you, our eternal God. We entrust our concerns to you today. We pray that you might be a mighty presence would take a place and not express the man and the mess that we've created. We ask that you would uh, give us your shalom, your peace, like we've never known before. We deliberately choose to trust you and to rest in you, our God, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, New Hope Community Church. John and Willowan Simons joining you here today. Your pastor is our son. Yes, Did you know we were part of your congregation these days? We're there every week joining you online and have very much enjoyed uh, your services and love your new building and looking mm -hmm. forward to joining you one of these Sundays when this COVID-19, all these restrictions are lifted. We're going to appear there one Sunday morning. We want to sing a song for you today.
Community Church Online. Uh, so we're going to do another kids song, um, and we're going to do Oh Happy Day, which is one of my favorites. So I hope that you do the actions with me, and adults, feel free to join in as well. Welcome to New Hope Community Church uh, this morning. I hope you've enjoyed the service so far, and I want to thank everybody who has contributed uh, to this and has overcome uh, some technology hurdles to to get this thing together. And I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to do this. 
Well, it, we've been journeying together over these past few weeks and daily as well for our daily devotionals and really trying to take uh, advantage of this time. Uh, a few days ago, I shared a story with you about uh, the difference between doing time and making time uh, serve you or serving time versus making time serve you. I, I have a, a friend who uh, didn't get very far in school and had a, a few knocks against him growing up and he found himself uh, incarcerated about 15 years ago. I met him uh, about three and a half years ago at uh, the Dorchester Minimum. And when I saw him, he had uh, worked as a carpenter on the inside. He had worked as an electrician on the inside. Um, he, I think he had about four different trades that he had worked on and had certificates. Uh, so when he was finished his 15-year sentence, which was just a few months ago, he immediately was employable. Well, when I first met him, he told me, he says, there's really two types of guys in here. There's, time, there's guys that come in here and say, well... I've got 10, 15, 20, 30 years of just uh, time to put in. So I guess I'll just tick off the days and, and just do my time. And they tend to wallow in misery and, and uh, just can't wait to get out. Then there's other types of guys, he said, and he would fall into this category, although he didn't say it himself, but he did. And that is a guy that said, all right, I did what I did, and I'm sorry, and I don't mind paying my price because I am guilty. But I'm going to go to my parole officer, I'm going to go to the warden, I'm going to go to the people who are here to correct me, because it is called Corrections Canada, and I want them to tell me what I can do, how I can make time serve me. And that's exactly what he did. He finished his education, he got four trades, and now he is out and working full time. Well, that's exactly what we are doing right now. We're, we're doing time. In fact, I've heard a few folks say, this is just like prison. And uh, I guess for some of us it might be. For others, we're enjoying this time of isolation, just a time of downtime, taking a few days off. Of course, that's not the case with everybody. A lot of us are getting stir-crazy, cabin fever and the like. And of course, some are missing out on, on jobs and of course, paychecks as well. So it's a kind of a varied time, but nonetheless, this is a time that we must go through together. So how are we going to use that time? Well, in the comments below, and if you're uh, on the New Hope Community Church email list, you would have received an email um, uh, Saturday night, last night, with the sermon outline and a few updates and pictures about the building as well. So in, in the outline, it's called How to Use This State of Emergency for Good, or how to use this state of emergency for God. And so again, there are two ways to handle this state of emergency. You can be bored out of your head, go stir crazy, empty out the refrigerator and gain a few pounds, or we could do something productive. Put time in or take advantage of the time. Well, many of us, that's all we have is time. These days are certainly uncertain. They are fearful. They are uh, days that are long, and I don't know about you, but I lose track of time. I went through all Thursday thinking it was Friday, only realized, hey, I've got an extra day this week. Wonderful. These, it is exactly these types of seasons in our lives, downtime, a little more time on our hands, forced isolation, that we can uh, take stock of our lives, we can center our lives, and of course, we here in the church at New Hope, we decide, you know what, Let, let's center our lives on Christ. Let's go a little deeper in our faith. Well, there's a lot of things we don't know right now. We really have no idea um, when we're going to gather as a church. This is uh, uh, Sunday morning, just a few days ago. Uh, our premier said that we're going to start opening things up. And so opening things up here means uh, what to the church? I guess we're in phase three, uh, which could be three to four weeks. I, uh, and, and what does that look like when we do open up? We don't really know. We have no idea when we can assume normalcy and what will normal the new normal be. We have no idea if normal is even coming back. But we do know that God is here. He is with us here in the valley. He is walking through this valley with us. He is unchanged. He is unmovable and constant. The one thing that can change in this, one of the things, is us. God doesn't change. 
but we can. This situation may not change this weekend. It may not change this week or next, or if it does, a little bit. But here's a great verse, and this verse has probably rung through your head, and you've maybe even spoken this. You may have read this. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that in all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Can we use this time for good? Of course we can. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at your outline there uh, this morning. The first thing we can do, number one, is draw closer to God and trust him more. Draw closer to God and trust him more. Listen to this piece of scripture. You can also look it up in your Bibles or again, it's in your outline in the comments. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8-10 through 10. We are crushed and overwhelmed and saw how powerless we were to help ourselves. But that was good, for then we put everything into the hands of God, who alone could save us, and he did help us. Is that your testimony? It's a great verse, right? In other words, it's saying, put your hand in the hand of the man who cal calmed the waters. I think that's Gene McClellan there. For those of you who have journeyed with us through the 23rd Psalm on Bible study night, Wednesday night at 6.30, we've got, I think, one more left or maybe two more left. You know the theme of David's uh, first part of the Psalm there, where he calls the Lord his shepherd. And the shepherd will give us what we need. And he will lead us beside still waters. And he will uh, make us lie down in green pastures. And he will lead us through the valley of the shadow of the darkness of death. And so we understand that um, what this is all about, that Psalm 23rd is all about trusting God and making him our shepherd and putting ourselves in the position of the sheep. Today, many of us have either GPS systems in our car or in our phone, and for the most part, they don't steer you wrong, with a few notable stories in the news, I suppose. But back in the day, before GPS, we had to put our trust as children in our dads. And uh, we, we had to make sure that, that uh, okay, Dad, you're not lost, right? Do you know where we're going? Are, are, are we lost, right? No? Well, our family traveled a lot as children. And uh, growing up, Mom and Dad were, were teachers. And so we'd hit the road in the summer when Dad went to Asbury down in Kentucky. Uh, we traveled quite a bit back and forth there. And so armed with an atlas or a map, and uh, we hit the road for summer trips and other excursions. By times, my sister and I would doubt Dad and say, Dad, do you, are, are, are we lost? Dad had a, a phrase. I'm not sure if this came from a movie. It sounded like a Humphrey Bogart quote or something. If we would doubt Dad or say, Dad, are we lost? He would come up with this phrase. Stick with me, kid, and you'll go far. Well, I survived childhood. So did my sister. We did make it out of the woods. And uh, we, we put our trust in Dad. During this journey through the valley with this coronavirus, we need to put our trust in our Heavenly Father, who won't steer us wrong, who does say to his children, I've got this. Stick with me. Stick with me. We will get through this. I have got this. This didn't catch God off guard. It wasn't unforeseen. And God is with us and near us during this time. He comforts those who are grieving. And he comforts those who are fearful. And this is a wonderful time for us to draw close to God. I hope you are. It's never been easier to take advantage of our daily devotions and other churches' daily devotions and songs that they're putting out there, Bible studies and church services. Even this morning, you may have visited three already this morning. I know I have. So these are times when we can draw close to God. Let's take a look at number two in your outline. We can draw closer to others in fellowship. This is a difficult one, again, because we are missing our physical gatherings, our fellowship times. But Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, By helping each other with your troubles, you truly obey the law of Christ. So this is a time that we need to reach out and fellowship with one another and, and uh, get over that uh, uh, tech technology hurdle there. Find out how you can Zoom or Facebook or FaceTime, all the different things I can put uh, a, a picture on a telephone there. Isn't it interesting that we are living in the future, a time when we do have all kinds of technology to put us face to face without being 
face to face. What if your present bubble is driving you nuts? Is it? I, I, I think our family's starting to go a little uh, stir crazy. We've been doing pretty good until this week, and we had a few flare ups there. And I see that this week we can uh, actually uh, uh, get another family bubble. So we can, if we're uh, mutually consent, that we can uh, uh, gather with another uh, family. Have you chosen one? I'm not sure. I think some family members might be hurt if we don't choose uh, certain family members. We can choose one family, but you can't swap your own family. If you're living in a house right now, you can't move to another house, okay? But this is a time to get creative. Things are starting to loosen up just a little bit more, and they will next week as well in the days coming. These are days when we can overcome and get together in virtual ways. These are days that we must start calling each other and sending notes to one another, dropping off notes and treats and baked goods. By the way, thank you very much for dropping off some things here to the house. Tragedies, dark valleys, fearful times bring God's people together and it is isn't it let's take a look at number three how can we use this time for good or for God grow deeper grow deeper and become more like Jesus second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 11 is another wonderful verse it's in the comment section below there in the outline now isn't it wonderful all the ways in which this distress uh, or this COVID time here has goaded you closer to God. You're more alive. You're more concerned. You're more sensitive. You're more reverent, more human, more passionate, more responsible. Look at it from any angle. You've come out of this with purity of heart. Sounds like Paul in 2 Corinthians is talking directly to us, isn't he? Well, he is. That's my challenge for myself and for you. Use this time to draw closer to God so that when we're all done this, our spiritual, spiritual souls are, are fortified, we are alive, we're raring to go, and we just are so full of Jesus and exuding Jesus because we have used this time well. This is a time to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. I th heard someone say in the news today that we were all ready before this all happened. We were a very lonely people here in Canada. We're isolated, wintertime especially so. There was, already a pan there was already a pandemic of loneliness. This time is worse. This time has made it uh, magnified that problem for many people. Isn't it nice to know that Jesus never leaves us? It's a relationship that we don't have to isolate from. In fact, this is where this relationship can bloom and grow. This is a time to develop this relationship, to become more like Jesus. Did you catch any of the nine days that we spent on the nine fruit of the Spirit? If you didn't, why don't you take a, a look back and review that there. Um, this is a wonderful time to take a look at those. Each one of those characteristics personifies Jesus Christ. And if we work on those with the help and cooperation of the Holy Spirit, we can become more like Jesus. Not through willpower, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number four, be more sensitive in serving others. Again, listen to this beautiful verse here, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 through 6. God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Then when others are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. You can be sure that the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will show, shower us with his comfort through Christ. So when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your benefit and salvation. For when God comforts us, it is that we, in turn, can be encouragement to you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. Isn't that a beautiful piece of scripture? And it's so true, isn't it? Today, we have some common factors. We have a common denominator. We are all going through this. We are all suffering through this. We are all fearful of what's going on. And we're all wondering what's going to happen here we have this common valley of isolation, loneliness, fear. You know it, and we know it, because we share it together. So if we would like a phone call, we should make a phone call. If we would like to receive a note, maybe we should send a note. If we have a need, we need to assume that others have a need as well. 
being in this, we understand each other. So number four, we become more sensitive in serving one another because we understand the need for us to be served ourselves during this time as, as well. So take that next logical step. Feeling down, isolated, frustrated, what you want, you in turn do for others. In other words, take the focus off ourselves and put it on another. Number five, and lastly, we can use this time for good. We can use this time for God to witness to the world. You are doing a wonderful job of this. I see you sharing things, uh, sending, posting things that are absolutely beautiful here. I believe that the church, not just our church, but church in general, doing a great job these days of putting ourselves out there, putting ourselves in front of people, and doing a wonderful do job of presenting Jesus and love and grace and encouragement and hope. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 says this, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Paul was in prison. Uh, but he said, this is good. This is this has helped spread the good, the good news of the gospel. I believe the same thing, don't you? Isn't it wonderful to click on uh, a Max Lucado and see that he's got three million views on a daily devotional? People are watching. Isn't it wonderful that churches that usually get 50 people are getting 500 people to church on a Sunday morning? Isn't it wonderful? There is going to be, uh, well, it's possible that we could gather at some capacity in May or June. If we open up in May, it looks like we may only do 50 at a time or something like that. Full church may not be till June. But I can guarantee you this, that when the church does open, whether it be three weeks or another month, there is going to be a rush. There is going to be a desire for physical contact. There's going to be a desire to say, we've seen what's going on online, and, but we, have the, we just want to be together. We want this co thing called fellowship. We just want to come see what's going on. Now is the time as Christians to draw in the net. We have new hope to share, the gospel that is. We have a fix for what people need. There will be also an excitement to build or to opening up the brand new church. So I think God knows what he's doing, don't you? So we're going to come out of this COVID scare, we're going to come out of these days of isolation, we're going to end the state of emergency at the same time that our church opens up. Isn't that great? So there's going to be this rush of people who want to be in a church, and we're opening up our church. Good news, isn't it? It's almost as if God knows what he's doing, <laughs> and he does. It's up to us to use this time to invite, to encourage, to bring our online community in to our physical reality next month. There are some things that we will certainly continue. I love this, and I think there's going to be a need for this online presence when this is all said and done. For our shut-ins who will be listening over the phone, I think that needs to continue as well. We will continue to have to put hooks in the water, so to speak, like this. It's a wonderful way, and we need to face it that many, many people come to church for the very first time online before they will ever enter into the church physically. We've learned a lot about connecting to others and to each other, and we need to continue that. But let's also, over the next few days and few weeks, be very intentional about inviting people out to celebrate togetherness and community and fellowship. We have this time to reach out, to encourage people, to say, you need to be part of a family. I don't think that's going to be a hard argument to make because I think that people are really out there craving physical community. I don't know about you, but I kind of have enjoyed this time of isolation. It's been relaxing. It's been wonderful to be around the house. Our dog is having a wonderful time. Our cats, again, not so much. I've enjoyed this time. It's changed the church. It's forced us as a church to come into the 21st century reality. But there are first century principles that still apply to the human need and condition and wants. People need community. People need a small group. People need a body that gathers and worships together and serves together, communes together, 
People need community. And that first century need will never, ever change. In fact, if anything, our 21st century days of isolation before this, an epidemic of loneliness and people isolating themselves away from society, I think this time has taught us that we're no good there. <laughs> we don't survive well as a community. We don't thrive as a community when we're not together. Isn't it cool that God has positioned us as a church in a perfect time such as this to take advantage of people's need for community? But also, this time has shown that God has exactly what everybody needs for peace, hope, joy, and love. Do you need a savior? Do you need community? Do you need a family? We all do. I encourage you today, if you're listening, if you are, uh, if this is your only involvement with the church, you've been looking around and watching around, you've been enjoying this, I'm glad. But I do invite you to take another step and say, you know what, I'm going to take the hand of the man who calms the storm. I'm going to, I'm going to walk with Jesus. I, I need to develop this relationship with the one who created me and who has my best interests in mind, who can lead me through times like this, can lead me through the good times and the bad times. And I need a community. I realize that I am isolated and I'm craving something. We invite you out to join our community. When we walk into that brand new church for the first time, we don't want to be the only ones. We want to bring new friends into that first Sunday and the first year of our existence there. It's going to be all new and fresh for us. So you won't be alone. We're all in this together. And we provide family. Our unofficial model that we've been kind of trying out over time is this, from strangers to friends to family. I kind of stole that from a documentary about the 9-11 tragedy and the, and the, the community in Newfoundland or Labrador uh, that uh, they, they housed, I forget what it was, 36 planes or 75 planes, I forget the number there. But the mayor of the small town said that week, uh, that they had with the Americans and other people from all over the world. They came in as strangers. In a few days, they were friends, but they left as family. We kind of stole that for ourselves because we think it's true. Many people come into our church for the very first time, and they don't know us. We don't know them, and they are strangers. Scripture says, I was a stranger, and you took me in. It's a very, very scriptural process. And we believe that when you come to our church very quickly, you will see that we are just like you, so you will find that that is exactly who we are. We bring people in, people come in as strangers. Very quickly you become friends, and then you are family. Would you join us and continue to join us online, get to know us, and would you take that step? Maybe you're not part of our community. There are churches around you that do the same thing, that just crave loving you. God loves you. They will love you, and they want you to be part of a vibrant and loving community as well. Well, friends, thank you for joining me today. I'm going to uh, pass it over to Pastor Gordon, and he's going to close us out with a... Uh, sorry, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Chris, who's going to sing a song now uh, that has everything to do with what we just talked about. And then Pastor Gordon is going to close us with a prayer. Thank you for joining me, folks. God bless. Many, many years ago now, probably 25 years ago, I was in Dawson Settlement Baptist Church. And uh, the guest singer for the service was a gentleman with one of the most beautiful baritone voices I've ever heard. And he sang a song called Till the Storm Passes By. And it's a beautiful hymn. I tried to master it on the guitar and couldn't. So I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'd like a song by that title. And he brought me to the portion of scripture where Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000. And he told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake. He stayed and dismissed the crowd and he went up on the hills to pray. And about 4 o'clock in the morning, a tremendous uh, scripture says a boisterous wind came up and created quite a turmoil on the sea. And Jesus came walking on the water to his disciples. And the Gospel of Mark says he was going to pass them by, but they cried out to him. And he looked at them and he said, 
be of good courage. Do not fear. It's just me. And Peter said to him, he said, well, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And he said, well, come on, Peter. And Peter got out of the boat and started to walk in the water. And like so many of us, Peter took his focus off the Lord and placed it on the storm. And when he did, he began to sink. And he cried out to the Lord. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and took Peter. And they walked back to the boat together. And the storm ceased and everything was calm. And the Lord gave me this song called The Storm Passes By. midst of the storm there is no way to see through the darkness that's all around you feel lost and alone with no place to turn don't give up just be on the cloud there is one who is there in the midst of the storm who speaks and the winds become still he walks on the waves in the darkest of nights who is silently waiting until you cry out to him and take hold of his hand he'll reach down and lift you up high. take your eye off the storm and look on to him he'll keep you safe till the storm passes by While your storm of life is raging high, he walks in its midst as he comes to you. Don't be afraid, he won't pass you by. He'll stop when he hears your cry just cry out to him and take hold of his hand he reach down and lift you up high take your eye off the storm and look on to him he'll keep you safe Till the storm passes by He'll keep you safe Till the storm passes by Well, good morning. I'm glad to be involved in the service this morning and I want to first of all talk, tell you about a few of the things that we should be praying about. Uh, first of all, I want to call us, of course, to continue to pray today for the people of Nova Scotia and to pray much for all of those who are affected by it and for all who are reaching out to the families of the victims. Work continues on the building. The flooring and painting and stage will be worked on this week. And work sometimes is interrupted because of the need for social distancing among the workers. So keep praying for their safety as well. 
Lavera gets her blood work done this week, and uh, we can pray that she'll be able to get her chemo treatment. Uh, Rhonda Vautour begins her treatment tomorrow. Uh, Velma is in hospital, uh, continuing to get tests. And of course, we need to continue to pray for the frontline workers and for the residents of nursing homes and special care homes. So will you pray with me? Father God, we're so glad that <clears throat> it's still easy to come to you in prayer. COVID-19 may keep us away from each other and keep us away from a lot of things, but we're so grateful that nothing, including this virus, can ever keep us away from you, from the God who loves us and who has our best interests at heart. Father, we first of all lift up Nova Scotia. There's so many hundreds of Nova Scotians <clears throat> who've been so directly affected uh, by this tragedy. Family members, work colleagues, friends, neighbors, and RCMP staff, government officials, beginning with Premier McNeil. All of these folks have certainly been in a double storm, the virus and now this evil tragedy. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you'll take them into your arms, comfort them, encourage and guide them through this and into a very different life beyond today. Father, remind us every day that in the midst of a storm, you are right there with us to see us through. And Lord, we lift up New hopers to you this morning who are in the midst of their own storms. It may be a storm of finances or relationships or a storm maybe of health or, or of work or lack of it. And so, Lord, whatever the storm is, I pray that you might meet our needs this morning. Father, will you help Lavera as she gets blood work done and make her blood work good enough so she can get her treatment. Father, too, I pray you'll give Velma some good days as she continues testing in the hospital. Rhonda's been in this storm for several months now, and so may you new, use the treatment she gets tomorrow to defeat the enemy in her body. We pray, Father, too, for Judy Steves, that you might ease the, the itching in this very own personal storm that Judy's in. We pray for frontline workers, for the cleaners, for the grocery store workers, for the drugstore workers, for others who work in stores, for government leaders, for our prime minister, for the premiers across the, the province, particularly for, the, for Premier uh, Ford and Premier Legault in uh, Quebec, as they battle a, 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 a relentless uh, enemy uh, there, in, especially in their seniors' homes. Father, work with them through the storm. Father, we thank you for Premier Higgs and Dr. Roberts. Father, we're so grateful for the, for the leadership that they've been giving to our province. And as they lead us into recovery of our economy, Father, remind us that they know much more than we do and convince us to follow their lead because, Lord, I'm convinced that, that they're following your lead. Lord, I pray for our community. Keep folks in our community as they go through the storms in their lives. Father, protect the workers as they complete our building and the flooring and the painting and and, the, and working on the stage. And Father, as I prayed last week, may, may this new building be a place where we can honor you and bring others so they can know the joy and the freedom that we have found when the storms of life have invaded us. When we've asked Jesus to forgive us, may those whom we bring to new hope find and experience that wonderful joy and forgiveness 
and that they too can begin this new life that only comes from a loving Father and through a forgiving Savior. And Lord, we love you. And we thank you in Jesus' name that you'll hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, um, thank you guys for joining us today in our service, especially for the kids that were here this morning. Um, and thanks for doing the actions along with me in the song earlier in the service. Thanks so much for being a part of New Hope online today. And we hope to see you again next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for participating in the service, all of you that uh, shot videos and sent them to us. Thank you, Pastor Gordon. Uh, thank you, Danielle, for uh, your input and all that you're doing as well. Thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, making the effort to come to church here uh, today, and we hope to see you all soon. Thank you.